unbelievable. Over $30 billion represents the staggering amount NASA and the government have poured into developing the SLS rocket for over 14 years, an investment so massive it could have launched two space companies like SpaceX. Yet instead of performing perfectly, the vehicle continues struggling with serious issues while facing the looming threat of cancellation, a fate Elon Musk predicted long ago when he boldly labeled it a disaster. So, what exactly is happening with SLS? Does this rocket stand a chance in the rapidly evolving space race? Let's dive into today's episode of Alpha Tech. In 2011, Congress kicked off a bold new chapter for NASA with the Space Launch System, designed to be the most powerful rocket in the agency's arsenal. Built by Boeing, this beast was meant to spearhead the Artemis program, putting astronauts back on the moon for the first time after decades since Apollo and setting the stage for future Mars missions. Standing 98 meters tall with a staggering 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust, NASA's Space Launch System was built to carry humanity's dreams to the stars. For years, it stood as a beacon of ambition, a towering symbol of our quest for deep space exploration. But the dream is slowly turning into a nightmare. Escalating costs, constant delays, and an outdated design cast long shadows over the rocket's future. Even SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk weighed back in 2020, bluntly stating on X, the fundamental issue with SLS is that it's not reusable, which means that a billion-dollar rocket is blown up every launch. 100% tragedy. He has long been a controversial figure on social media, but this time, his comments struck a chord. The truth is that SLS offers limited potential while burning through billions of taxpayer dollars. Since its inception in 2011, the Space Launch System has devoured a jaw-dropping sum of public funds. According to a 2023 report from NASA's Office of Inspector General, the program's cost has soared past $23 billion for development alone, with billions more funneled into testing, infrastructure, and operational expenses. By March 2025, estimates suggest the total tab, including the Artemis War Mission and preparations for Artemis II, could exceed $30 billion. That's the kind of money NASA's Space Launch System, SLS, demands, a figure so massive it could launch fleets of smaller rockets or fun game-changing research instead. Each SLS launch, estimated at roughly $4.1 billion, according to a 2022 audit, highlights the enormous investment and the increasing doubts it faces. For comparison, the entire Apollo program, adjusted for inflation, cost about $257 billion in today's dollars and successfully landed humans on the moon six times, a feat SLS has yet to match. Moreover, the SLS's staggering price per launch comes with a bitter catch. It's not reusable. Each mission sends billions up in flames, a waste Musk called a tragedy, on X in 2020. In the meantime, SpaceX's Falcon 9 lands and relaunches for just $67 million, and Starship aims for under $10 million with full reusability. While SLS remains a one-and-done relic, its rivals are rewriting spaceflight economics. This was a big reason why Boeing SLS announced on February 7th that they're planning to cut around 400 jobs from the program, citing revisions to the Artemis program and cost expectations. A Boeing spokesperson told reporters, to align with revisions to the Artemis program and cost expectations, today we informed our Space Launch Systems team of the potential for approximately 400 fewer positions by April 2025, adding, this will require 60-day notices of involuntary layoff be issued to impacted employees in coming weeks, in accordance with the Worker Adjustment and Retraining Notification Act. These layoffs could ripple through the Artemis timeline, already strained by delays. With Artemis II slated for April 2026 and Artemis III for September 2027, losing skilled workers risks slowing critical tasks like assembling the Block 1B upper stage, risking further setbacks for NASA's lunar goals. The severe setbacks of the SLS program have caused many former supporters to turn away. Scott Pace, director of the Space Policy Institute at George Washington University, stated, We need an off-ramp for reliance on the SLS. He made this remark during a congressional hearing on U.S. space policy and the future of NASA's Artemis Moon program. As a highly influential figure in space policy research and development, Pace was a staunch supporter of the SLS after Congress directed NASA to build the rocket in 2011, but now he's lost all faith in the program. Scott explained, Ideally, NASA should be able to buy heavy lift services to send payloads to the moon 
up to about 45 metric tons to translunar injection, which is about the same performance as the SLS Block II. He admitted he backed SLS at the start because NASA needed a powerful rocket to send humans to the moon and Mars. And back then, he didn't think the private sector could deliver a heavy lift option within 20 years. But things have changed. Today, the situation is different, with heavy lift options from SpaceX, Blue Origin, and United Launch Alliance, he added. Pace's change of heart came as a surprise, especially to lawmakers like Brian Babin, who still believes SLS is the only way for the U.S. to beat China in the race to the moon. Babin reiterated his support for the program, stating, There's no other way we're going to get back to the surface of the moon before the Chinese without the SLS. Maybe Babin has never really looked into Starship. Or maybe he's just blindly loyal to the SLS, ignoring the strengths of SpaceX's greatest space vehicle. Right now, SpaceX is advancing its next-generation Starship, and compared to SLS, it outshines in every way, especially cost. Since 2011, the SLS program has swallowed over $30 billion for development, testing, salaries, and repairs, with each launch piling on billions more. People say, you get what you pay for. But SLS defies that logic. Despite the massive investment, it's plagued by delays. Artemis II, once targeted for 2024, now sits at April 2026, after over a decade of work. At the same time, SpaceX built Starship for just three to five billion dollars. Fully reusable, it slashes costs, and Musk aims to drop launch prices to two to three million dollars, over 1,300 times cheaper than an SLS flight. That gap isn't just savings, it's a revolution in reach. Sure, SLS has sustained 28,000 jobs across 44 U.S. states, but that hefty payroll hasn't delivered a rocket that can match Starship's efficiency or ambition. Responding to a post on X, Musk nailed it. SLS makes me feel sad, a sentiment echoing its wasteful sprawl against Starship's lean promise. And the gap widens when you stack them side by side. SLS towers at 98 meters, but Starship with Super Heavy looms larger at 120 meters. Size matters, SLS's 8.4 meter wide core offers a cramped 400 cubic meters while Starship's 9-meter-wide boasts 1,000 cubic meters of room. Payload tells a stark tale. SLS Block 1 hauls 27 tons to lunar orbit, creeping up to 46 tons in its ultimate Block 2 form. Yet it's a delivery boy, not a lander. Starship? It slams over 100 tons straight onto the moon's surface, refueled in orbit, a beast built for the job. Meanwhile, SLS clings to outdated space shuttle tech, a one-use wonder, while Starship's reusable design, forged in stainless steel 304L with 18,000 heat shield tiles that shrug off 1,400 Celsius degrees or 2,500 Fahrenheit degrees, charges into the future. The engines widen the chasm. SLS relies on four RS-25s, each pumping out 2,281 kilonewtons, propped up by aging boosters. But Starship roars ahead with 33 Raptors in Super Heavy, each unleashing 2.3 million newtons, plus six more on the ship, fueled by cutting-edge methane and oxygen. That power translates to thrust. SLS musters a respectable 8.8 .8 million pounds, only to be dwarfed as Starship doubles down with a staggering 17 million pounds. SLS limps along a costly relic for Artemis, burning billions per launch, while Starship's size, tech, and raw might, poised to haul humanity and cargo alike, redefine what's possible. Fourteen years have gone by, and NASA's SLS has just one launch. November 2022, Artemis 1, sending Orion up. That's all after ages of waiting. Meanwhile, Starship's racked up eight test flights, getting better every time. It's made to swap out Falcon and Dragon for Starlink launches, refuel in orbit like a tanker, zip around the globe in 30 minutes, and even grow into a space station to replace the ISS. The FAA's approved 25 launches for 2025, Starship's unstoppable. It's a giant that can do it all, aiming for Mars and beyond, while SLS, with its insane price tag, sits stuck on Earth, staring at moon dust it can't even reach. And on space forums, people are straight up wondering, what if the U.S. government and NASA had poured all that SLS money into Starship instead? Some say we'd already be back on the moon, decades after Apollo 17, leaving China in the rear view. And it's not just armchair speculation. Even industry insiders believe SLS might get the axe sooner or later, crushed under its own massive costs and outdated tech. Last year, Eric Berger, 
a respected U.S. space journalist, recently dropped a bombshell on X saying, To be clear, we are far from anything being settled, but based on what I'm hearing, it seems at least 50-50 that NASA's space launch system rocket will be canceled. No official announcement has been made, but such a move would align with earlier speculation that the Trump administration might pressure NASA to hand over a significant portion of its work to private companies like SpaceX, Blue Origin, ULA, or Boeing. So, if SLS gets canceled, what rocket could possibly take its place? That question goes straight to the heart of America's ambitions in this new space race. And the answer could shape NASA's future for decades to come. China's set to land astronauts on the moon by 2030, and they don't miss deadlines like the U.S. does. With rockets and landers already in testing, they're racing ahead while NASA's SLS stumbles with delays and costs. If China beats America to the moon, it'll be a humiliating slap to NASA and the nation. Artemis, on the other hand, keeps hitting roadblocks, redesigned spacesuits, issues with Orion's heat shield and life support, and of course, waiting on Starship. But maybe that wait is worth it. Starship isn't just a backup. It's the perfect replacement for SLS, a powerhouse with endless capabilities, boosting mission success while slashing costs. The question is, if SLS gets scrapped, can Musk's Starship take its place? The answer is yes. But with tens of billions already sunk into SLS, scrapping it entirely might not make the most economic sense. NASA itself has hinted at exploring innovative approaches, working alongside commercial companies for future Artemis missions. So, even if SLS fades into the background, there could be plenty of ways for private space companies to step in and shape what comes next. Here's a perfect scenario. SpaceX swoops in to redesign NASA's SLS, transforming it into a reusable rocket-like starship, complete with its own Mechazilla. But first, NASA needs to rethink its spending on SLS, and maybe it's time for the government to back SpaceX harder, letting American innovation lead the charge. Because this isn't just about the moon, it's about reaching Mars and beyond. That's the end of the episode today. If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for watching. See you next time as we keep chasing the stars.